Hi, this is Justin from the Metabolic Nutritionist Podcast. Um, today I'm speaking to Paul Wintle. Uh, Paul, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks, Justin. Good to be here. Hey, no worries. Um, Paul can be found over at paul.wintle at Instagram. Um, Paul, uh, one of the things I wanted to start the podcast with today was speaking about um, kind of efficiency of achieving people's goals. Because it's so prevalent in time to where people look at all this information online and they see that it takes a lot of time to achieve health, to achieve fat loss, to gain the muscle they want to have. When in reality, that's only if you want to achieve the extremes of that kind of range. Because quite often on Instagram, we see people who are professional bodybuilders or trainers, all these other things. Um, what are some things people can do to fit achieving a healthy lifestyle or fit getting muscle or, or, or fat loss into their lives when they only have so much time throughout the week? <clears throat> well, I'll just speak on my behalf. Um, I've sort of, I've been through the bodybuilding phase and, and trying to take things to an extreme when I probably didn't need to. Um, I didn't really have a, a purpose. I didn't identify myself as, as a professional athlete or anything like that, but I was spending a lot of time at um, football training, which is like Aussie rules football training. So we, we trained two hours a night. I'd be at the gym for an hour with all my friends and that was five days a week on the weekend, you'd be doing recovery. Um, and as I got older and started working full time, that wasn't possible. Um, and I eventually stopped playing footy by the time I was about 25. And since moving into a house, doing a house renovation, having a partner, um, trying to, trying to work around all those adult things. Um, it became really hard to, to find time and um, maybe only have an hour for the day. So now I am where I am. I've got a purpose. I'm, I'm following a vision and that's, that's aligning with me wanting to become a coach and to show people my methods. And to me, I've figured out what's important, what I think is important anyway, which is my range and flexibility um, because of all those years of training for a random purpose, um, my body stiffened up and, and um, I'm, I'm paying for it now. So I'm, I'm just looking at getting the most, the most out of my body and by doing, by doing the range and eating healthy and doing all the really simple things, that's working for me personally. So all, all that is, is for me, it's drinking... Um, drinking good quality water and the right amount of water um, that my body needs personally, eating the right foods and, and nourishing my body like this stuff. You don't have to put time aside for it. It's just what you're doing anyway. So why not, um, you know, why not do the right thing? And, and even if it costs a little bit extra because it's time and it's money. And, and to me in the last few months, especially I've, um, I've allowed myself to, to be okay with spending that little bit of extra money on these things, because to me that goes further than spending two hours in the gym now, um, doing some bodybuilding style exercises, you know, doing the bicep curls and bench press, still do that stuff, but not spending as much time. So um, I think to like round up the, the question is, or the answer to your question is um, probably to stick to the basics and, and do do things that's going to like nourish your body and not because, because not everyone is a professional athlete. So unless you are, we don't need to be training like one. So if you can get the basics right, then yeah, that, that's, that's the first step to me. You make it, a, make it a habit before you sort of worry about the performance and stuff. And then, um, yeah, that, that's sort of, that's sort of where I'm at at the moment and it's, and it's working. My body's feeling the best it's felt and it's, and I'm looking the best I've ever looked and performing better as well. So yeah, I think getting clear on your goals is probably the, the first thing. And then you can just design a program and, and structure your life around that. And, and you really don't need long if you do it properly. I think that's huge. I think the majority of people forget that uh, they feel like this is such a momentous task. There's so many hundreds of little things that they have to do because there's so much misinformation out there as well and really when you stick to the basics it happens naturally it happens very very easily um in my last podcast i was speaking about um uh, an interview i did with uh, ashley parkhouse um and he was talking about the fact that if you focus on just your health quite often 
the body will follow. If you're looking for to get aesthetic results, get that six pack fit, build muscle, all these other things. If you simply focus on just the health, those things will follow automatically. And, and that really comes down to really nailing the nutrition, uh, getting adequate sleep, a little bit of good training within there as well. Uh, and things just basic, such as uh, drinking up water. Um, and really when it comes down to it, it's not necessarily so expensive. If you want to get the best quality organic meat, sure, that's going to be better for you. But simply cutting out all the processed food and just eating the, the, the standard meat that's available, uh, the cheaper cuts as well, that will get you much better results and we would be much healthier than eating all these microwave meals and things like that as well, which when in the end, when you look at the prices of all of them, uh, really, if you buy meat in bulk and then partition it up in, in smaller amounts and then cook it in a batch and, and do your meal on meal prep and things like that, it probably works out cheaper in the end if you're just having things such as rice, your bit of veg, and then uh, things such as uh, minced meat and things like that in there as well. And that can be very, very delicious and tasty as well. Um, so there's, there's, once you really know the path, there's no excuses not to get there. It, it's, it's very simple, very easy, very straightforward. Um, and I think that's the thing. The majority of it is in the mind for most people. Most people, it's, it's a bit of a mental block to get to where they want to uh, be rather than the actual physical block there. Yeah. Um, and and having, having something... Um, having a proper vision is the other thing. It's write it down and start at the end of your life. How do you want it to look? This is what's worked for me the best out of anything because it breaks it down into daily actions to me. So what do I want for when it's the end of when my time's up looking back, how, who do I want to be? Who do I want to be around? What do I want? What are the things I want? All that sort of stuff. Actually write that stuff down and then, break it down into another five years, three years, two years. And then it, I'm actually following the system like that the real movement guys have put out there. And, and I'm following, I'm chasing goals monthly, but that's also breaking down into weekly. And now daily I'm ticking little boxes off of my whiteboard that says like drink four liters of water and do, do one minute of handstands per day because my three month goal is, a one minute handstand. So a one minute, like straight handstand. So yeah, if I'm, if I'm accumulating one minute per day and I'm ticking off the boxes, that works for me better than anything. And that's how basic it is. And it can be three goals that you want. It can be, it can be something for your body, something for your mind, and then something for your soul, like meditating, reading and handstand practice, like those three things, sticking, sticking to those three things and being able to actually tick off a box every day. That's, that's changing the way that I'm progressing through everything because I've actually got about nine boxes a day that I tick, but yeah, it's, it's getting me closer to those goals more than anything else I've ever done. So, and that's, that's as basic as it gets a whiteboard and you can just write on it and rub it off every single day. That's huge. And this is the thing, it's neat, like, it sounds like it's an opposite, but setting yourself a huge goal, say this is long-term two years, three years from now, I want to achieve this one big a body transformation or something like that. But then in the meantime, breaking it down into these smaller steps where on a daily basis nearly seems insignificant. Just doing 10 minutes of activity every single day, everybody's got time for that. And just sit, putting that down there on that list, down to the exact number of amounts of, of uh, how long you're practicing a handstand or how long you are. Uh, one thing I talk about a lot is that the 10 minute walks, Stan Efferding, he always talks about doing the 10 minute walks after meals. And nearly everybody has five or 10 minutes after a meal, just I'm going to stand up and walk around the block, uh, head back home. And just that one little step will cut off so many calories and a lot more of the, the replenishing of the glycogen and the muscles itself. And um, it's such a small tweak that can make huge differences in people's lives. Um, so I think that's the thing, just breaking it down to these tiny little steps where they seem like it's, it's nothing. And another thing that people, uh, forget about it as well is that something that writers always talk about say like oh just write 100 words so it seems to write 5,000 words in a day is that's hard if you write 100 words that's like oh, i'll get that done in like 10 minutes time and quite often when they get those 100 words out of the way like i don't really want to stop i'm in a flow now i'm really being super productive and they end up writing more than 5,000 words in a day they just can't stop that activity and this happens with people as well where they kind of look at it, oh i only got an hour or I only got half an hour a day to exercise or it's, it's a, it's, oh, this is a big kind of slog in my mind. But once you start exercising, it becomes this addictive thing where you start to enjoy it so much as well. And you really kind of say like, well, I could watch an hour on Netflix, but actually once I've got started exercising, I'm not so, 
you know, oh, if I miss that hour of Netflix, I'd much rather focus on my health and focus on the exercise of these kind of things because it's much more satisfying on a deep level because I know the results I'm going to get out of it as well. Mm. Yeah, for sure. And, and how many people do you hear talk about, oh, um, I wish I was, I wish I wasn't so heavy. I wish I didn't, um, like, I wish I didn't look this fat or I wish I, I wish I was healthier. I wish I was fitter, better at running. Like I wish I was more flexible, but those, those little 10, 15 minute things every single day, the consistency, that's where it happens. It's not going into the gym for two hours per day and smashing yourself. Well, it burnt me out and, it, and I got no results from it. But these consistent little commitments that I'm making every day, that's making the biggest difference. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. yeah, definitely. And um, uh, I've been to, uh, I see, what's his name? Jacob from uh, Unbound Athlete. And uh, he was saying that uh, quite often, he'll have clients come in who are professionals. They're working this amount of hours and they're nearly burnt out and they'll, they'll check their HRV and see that there's a huge amount of inflammation and they're, but they're saying like, oh no, I'm, I'm so stressed out. I just want to smash it in the gym. I, I want to get rid of all this stress. And he goes, no, 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 we're going to completely train, change your training because that's going to add more stress to your body. It's going to add more cortisol and these other things that are going to push you all the way over to an area where you're not anabolic anymore. You're not growing, you're not... Uh, recovering anymore it's much better to get maybe some uh, lower repetitions get that stimulus in without too much stress on the body itself um i think that's what people will forget a lot of times as well is that it's, it's so beneficial to test yourself to see where you're at and only put amount of stimulation on the body that's needed to get the best results as well um, and unless you're uh, on performance enhancing drugs and it's one of the things i don't like talking about too much because People can get really, really good results without taking steroids. But it seems to be a thing a lot of people blame it on. Oh, you can only get, oh, look at those bodies. Oh, they're, they're on steroids. That's why they're doing that. Kind of thing, you know? mm. and you're like, no, no. Quite often these people have only been, as you said, consistent over years after years after years. And that's how they achieve that. Um, uh, and again, it comes back down to uh, seeing that six years of training. Oh, no, man, that's, that's too much in my mind. Break it down to that. that just that one day and then consistently do that for years and years and years and you'll get the results from that. Yeah. 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 And, and the, the, the more I progress with it, everything that I'm doing, the more I'm realizing that <clears throat> that yin and yang sort of approach of, if you do have a big run or, and you do have a big session in the gym, then you can, we well I, I have been and I feel like I should I need to at the end of the day if I'm up early and I'm running at the end of the day I make sure that I'm switching off and meditating or stretching or having some sort of recovery bath just to counteract the effort that I'm putting in and that goes that goes with anything if I'm too stressed or if I'm reading too much or if I'm if I had a big day moving hand what we've recently done um, allocating like conscious time to switch off and just to calm down and, and get back to that sort of normal energy levels that does, that does just as much for the actual training for me now as well, because I did actually burn, burn out when I was younger from, from just going and going. And I, and I feel like it's probably put me on this path because now I'm really happy. I'm, I'm using a holistic approach now, which is mm. I'm really feeling the benefits. Um, but back in the day, just aimlessly training and doing everything that I was doing, which is, I think what a lot of people do do, um, but not allowing that downtime that that's, that's really detrimental to your health, like mentally and physically, that was no good for me. So yeah, allowing, um, allowing the downtime and like, yeah, that yin and yang just sticks in my mind. It's so easy to remember. And it's easy to just say at the end of the day, oh, that was a big day. I'm going to switch off. I'm going to go to bed early and read a book. Or I need to meditate, but just allowing for that time instead of forgetting about it and staying quiet all day. Yeah. Uh, I think this is something that keeps coming up in these podcasts as well, is where people both say focus on the recovery. Um, and I think if you're not starting right now, if you listen to this and you said, oh, I'm not trained, I've not uh, started my uh, fat loss journey or getting muscle or kind of achieving the best health that I can get as well. Um, quite often before you start, it seems like this big thing. Once you get started, it's, an, it's addictive and it's very hard to stop. And once you get started, the recovery becomes exponentially more important. 
because it's actually once you get started doing the work is the easiest thing doing the training is the easiest thing really kind of uh, pushing yourself to limits our minds once we cultivate a little bit of willpower can go very very far with these kind of things and then it becomes to get the best results really focusing on the recovery but if you focus on recovery before you've even any of the work you know people are like oh the recovery is the most important part well yes but have you gone to the gym first because if you say like i'm recovering i'm sitting on the sofa i'm not doing anything that's not going to result either um but yeah but also i think most people are not recovering before they've even started as well sleep is such an important factor and late into the night they're staring at these screens that are emitting off this heavy strong blue light they're looking watching their tvs again strong blue light all the lights in their houses as well are light bulbs that are giving off blue light and it's constantly signaling towards the body that it's, you know, it's, it's, it's morning time. You're not meant to go to bed right now. It's not producing any melatonin, the sleep hormone. It's, it's not having any of that within you. And they go straight to bed and they close their eyes and they're sitting there for hours awake, wondering why they can't get to sleep. Um, and it's more than that as well. It's like just exposure to the skin. Even when you close your eyes, if in the, your bedroom, you don't, you have cracks of light coming through or if there's light shining on you or anything like that, all these little things constantly signal to the body that it's morning time and not nighttime. Over time, time, day in, day in, day in, day out, you're not getting the recovery that you should be getting at nighttime. Um, I think it's a huge thing for fat loss, for getting muscle, and all these things. Optimizing your sleep is so, so, so important. Yeah, um, yeah that's right. Sorry? I was going to say, you're in a, in a, a fat at the moment. You're traveling around within that. Um, how do you find that for affecting uh, recovery and sleep? Is that something that gets in the way, or have you really kind of managed to block all the light out and... Uh, uh, make sure that you have a good sleep over there where i'm in the van and and in two days we're taken off on our trip but um we have been sleeping in it in the driveway at home just to test it out and we don't have curtains up yet and we've got a big skylight up behind there but we're going to completely block everything out um mm. no noises no little no little red flashlights on monitors anything like that um because of all the reasons you were talking about so we sleep in the van really quiet <laughs> and it's quite cozy. So we love sleeping here. We're, we're looking forward to being on the road, training, getting some good recovery. I know that sounds a bit funny. So like, that's what our holiday is all about though. We sort of want to, we want to go visit somewhere and go for a run along a track in, in different parts of Australia. And um, yeah, like funnily enough, that's sort of what I'm most excited about just to see how we can cope with all that on the road in the van. But um, we do a lot to help our sleep. Like, We've been, say, it gets to five o'clock and if we're in bed at, say, eight or 8.30, we're not drinking any water from five o'clock because we were waking up and going to the toilet several times a night. That's, that's probably been one of the biggest things for us to allow us to have unbroken sleep. Um, yeah, all the lights, limiting screen time. Like, we made a big deal about, about this recently and it's just changing everything for us. Like, the, the sleep quality we're getting is phenomenal because of it. And... Yeah, just, just those small things, it, again, just goes such a long way. And they're just basic things that everyone can do. Like how, how often do you just sit in, in, in bed on your phone, scrolling mindlessly? Um, yeah, you don't realize how much that's sort of damaging your, your quality of sleep. And um, caffeine, like, you know, not having a break from caffeine, something I've just learned about, um, that can be detrimental as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, there's so many little things that people could try just to, just to help. But I find that you sort of give this advice or tell people what you're doing and tell them that it works, but it's hard for them to do, but they don't realize how easy it actually is. And you know, if they really wanted, they could, they could try these things and, and you can almost guarantee that it will improve what, how they're feeling. Yeah, for sure. And this is the thing you nearly want people to uh, experience what it's like to be you, to be able to feel what it's like to actually apply these things towards your life. Because when you get that fantastic sleep, when you wake up and you've been training consistently and you're eating well, your mind is sharp and you're feeling full of energy and you just feel so motivated to do everything you want to do. Overall, you just feel so much better. And I think people are living in this, uh, where they're basically not fit, they're below the optimal level. They're not feeling very, very well consistently. And they're using things such as caffeine, which in a normal dose, not necessarily a bad thing, but having a cup of coffee here and there. But as you said, if you cut it out, sometimes much better. They're, when they're in pain, they take a painkiller straight away. They're constantly numbing themselves down and not trying to remove all of these bad feelings, all these symptoms of not an optimal health, but they don't know how good it actually feels when you actually apply these things towards your life. And you really want to 
is a lot of times just wish you could be, take some person and just for an hour experience what it's like to be healthy. And I know for sure that they would never go back. They would instantly feel the difference between the two. Um, and they would be extremely motivated to get out of that. But this, it's just good enough for them not to be motivated. It's like, oh, it's not bad enough to, to, to start moving more, to start eating healthier and all these things. Um, man, I'm, uh, it sounds like you're going to be on a, an amazing trip coming up as well. Uh, and it, I mean, definitely get out in, uh, into nature as well. That's one of these things. It sounds so woo-woo. It sounds so alternative. But things that just earthing and grounding, just simply get in contact with the earth, I mean, I thought it was, ah, no, that's not possible. That's just such an alternative thing. But once you start doing it as well, you start to feel all of your recovery coming back as well. I think that's one of the reasons when people go on a holiday and they go out to a beach and they've got their feet on the ground, all of a sudden they start to feel much better from that sense as well. Um, that's going to be great, I'm sure. Yep, yeah, we're really not far off. So where we are in Victoria, in, in Australia, Melbourne, um, we're – we're in like a pretty strict lockdown at the moment because of the coronavirus. So we had like a 5k radius from our house recently that's only just been lifted and it's like 20k now. But um, over, over the winter, it's been real tough. We haven't been able to sort of go down the beach and do as normal things that we normal that we, that you can. Um, when the thought of going up the East coast, up Queensland where the sun is shining and it's really nice and we are going to be on beaches and in forests and stuff. My my partner's right into that, and she she talks about it every day. She just she's obsessed with being out in nature, um, and something I never thought of. But now that now that I get up and we go for a walk together, or we sit outside and watch the sun come up, and you know don't have any distractions, like yeah, we're we're noticing how beneficial that is too. Just we're just I think I think all these little tweaks I've made <laughs> are just completely changing who I am. Um, and, and like you said, like a lot of people probably, they don't get to the point where it's so bad that they need to make the change. Um, I think for me, it was in about March, I, I got sick with pneumonia and I remember this ha- going through a, a terrible night and I was, had fevers and I was coughing up flame. I was really struggling and I thought, I just realized how much I took my, my health for granted. And it was so bad that I thought to myself, I'm never doing what I used to be doing. Like I need to, I need to change my lifestyle. Mm. And that was it for me. Like it wasn't anything too bad. I came back and I was okay. But just, just having that in the back of my mind, um, just that's what was the paradigm shift for me is like, I'm going to change things. I started being influenced by guys online, like yourself, the content you put out, there's been really helpful. You've, you've, you've answered a few questions for me and, and that's been helpful. And like, I've just sort of taken that path now and, and that's only been five or six months. And I'm, I can say that I'm not going back. Like you said, like, yeah, once you experience it, there's this, yeah, there's no going back. It's, yeah. And it's such a shame that people need to get to that. And I've experienced it myself as well, where it got so bad. They're like, okay, well, now I'm going to transform my life. And once you get into it, you get into the cycle and it kind of really pushes you. Um, I think it's never too late, though. You always kind of wish, like, oh, I wish I knew this when I was a teenager. If I could apply this earlier into my life, it would be so much further along. It would be so much healthier, so much better performance and all those things. So even if you're you know, later in life, if people are uh, 40, 50, 60, beyond that, doesn't matter if, if you want to get started on improving your health or losing fat or getting muscle or all of these things that benefit your, your life, getting started straight away and, and, and just with those small actions on a daily basis will make a huge difference. And I think a lot of people will be surprised with themselves that no matter what weight they are, or no matter what age they are, or what kind of situation they are with their health as well, if they simply start naming the basics, the sleep, the nutrition, and a little bit of healthy training in there as well, that those three things will just simply transform their lives in huge ways more than any other uh, pill could do that or, or um, any other intervention within our lives. And we love to introduce gadgets and specialist training and all the other uh, things. Just simply those, those three things will make a huge difference in their lives. Yeah. 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 yeah you're so right. Like, I've fallen into those traps of just, you know, trying to do too much and thinking, why isn't it working? Like you see other people progressing and they're using gadgets and doing all these different types of training. But I can almost guarantee that if you're you're not drinking the right amount of water and you have a solid month of hydrating yourself properly, that'll make a difference. Like more than anything. And, and that's just water. But like, I don't know, people, uh, 
I don't know if people realize how much of a difference that really does make. And that's, that is so basic, but I couldn't recommend that more than anything else. Thank you, Brother. Well, before we go off then, uh, let's get a short list of some things that some small tweaks that people can do to um, improve their health or lose fat or gain muscle in as most efficient possible way. And there's little things that they can introduce, say, oh, they're going to add one of these in this week and then another one in next week. So we got um, removing blue light uh, in your environment. We've got hydration. That's number two. So making sure, how much water would you recommend that someone drinks on a, on a daily basis? There I know there's, I know there's probably calculations that can be made, but just as a rule of thumb, um, I know we did it, we did it for, we did the calculation for myself and for my wife and she was on around two and a half to three liters and I was on around three and a half liters. So I would say between two to three liters is enough. And if you really want to work it out, then, then you can find out online, but from some sort of calculation that they, they have out there, but yeah, as a rule of thumb, two to three liters, um, yeah, like you said, the blue light stuff, I would say the timing of the water too. Mm. If you're getting up and you're having a coffee first thing in the morning, have a liter of water or 500 ml of water before you have a coffee. That was huge for me as well. That set my doubt really well. So that's another thing. It's all good to do with hydration, but yeah. And then um, no water after five o'clock. No water Just, after five o'clock. Well, that, that's not four. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else? I think, like you said, walking after a meal, I think that's probably, yeah, another, another one people really need to consider doing. Um, mm -hmm. Not only for the, all the benefits that you're talking about for your body's reaction, just mentally, like there's a, there's a photo online and it's like of a brain before a, a scan of a brain before a walk and then after a walk. And it just shows, it's like a heat heat map of the brain and it just shows how much more activated your brain is um after like a 10 or 20 minute walk and i've always just thought of that and just yeah and i definitely feel it when i do that myself so yeah like huge benefits for for mental health and for sleep and for the circadian rhythm and for digestion and all these other things yeah definitely yeah yeah like there's there's not really much more you need to do yeah to me that's if you can't get those things down pat then you shouldn't really be worrying about performance and you know doing doing crazy things yeah like stick to the basic things and then move on perfect brilliant well on that note uh thank you so much for coming on the podcast everyone go follow paul wintle on instagram is paul.wintle uh, over at instagram um if you liked the podcast uh please like subscribe um and uh, and leave a comment if you can as well I'm curious to hear your feedback on this um paul thanks so much Thanks, Justin. I appreciate you having me on. And um, yeah, I would say to anyone listening to go back and listen to your podcast. I really enjoyed them. There's some nice little two, three minute gems in there and then some really good interviews and I've got a lot out of them. So yeah, I'd highly recommend it. Great, man. Thank you.